Hello, my name is Myron, and this is my final project presentation for this Introduction to Computer Science course. My final project is a game of Blackjack, or 21. And just a heads up, uh, this is not a tutorial, but more of a run through of the concepts behind creating the program. So the main library at use here is the Pi Game Library, and it is responsible for creating the graphical user interface, or the GUI, as well as taking actions and decisions from the player. So these lines of code here uh, show the creation of the GUI along with the sizing and the title of the program. However, with most GUI programming, as soon as you run the program, the window will pop up and instantly close. So in order to keep the window open, uh, we must run a while loop to prevent the window from instantly closing. Then we will have the loop break once the player has clicked the X button to close the window. So this is the card object. Here I have identified four parameters that define a card. The card's value, the card's name, the suit, and the image of the card. And so I'll, I'll talk about the difference between a value and the name. So um, for the name, um, I chose to keep everything as an integer. So for example, an ace would be a one, uh, You know, two would be a two, 10 would be a 10, a jack would be 11, a queen would be 12, and a king would be 13 and so on. For the values, however, this is specific to the game. In this case, in the game of blackjack, aces will have the value of 11 or one, and that will be decided uh, later on. But for now, it is 11, and face cards will have a value of 10. For the suits, a integer value one would represent spade, clubs would be two, diamonds would be three, and hearts would be four. So the images of the cards are found online for free, uh, courtesy of the American Contract Bridge League. All image files are stored in a folder called images. And this folder is in the same directory as the Python script. As you can see here, when importing the images, the directory is the same. And I've made sure that the images are named properly so that all images can be pulled in at once from just these three lines of code. Over here, the image is being rescaled based on the desired uh, width and height of the card. And it is then appended to a list of image objects. And this is an object for the back of the card. So now that the images are imported, the card objects can now be initialized. Here we have the values, the names, the suit, and the images. And after the cards are all initialized, they're placed in a deck, which is nothing more than a list of card objects. Then the deck is going to be returned. And here is where the deck is created. And I've also made a copy of this deck so that we can play with one without affecting the original deck. So before dealing out cards in any card game, uh, the deck must be shuffled first. But in programming, instead of shuffling, we can just use uh, random numbers to select the card. And here we'll use this get random card function to do so. And every time this is used, a card is being removed from the deck and the length will be updated every time a card is being taken out. For the player, when the player draws a card, it also calls the get random card function, as well as updating the card's position for how it's going to be shown on the GUI. Same thing for the opponent, or in this case, the AI. Uh, this has more lines of code because uh, we are going to have a spectator mode, and I will talk about that later. The AI will also determine if it even wants to draw a card in the first place. And in this case, the condition is that it will always stay or pass if the value of the current hand is 18 or higher without busting. Obtaining the value for the AI and the player's hand is also very important, so it gets its own function called get card value. And here is where the value of the aces are determined. If the hand value is below 21, the aces will have the value of 11. If the card value exceeds 21, then as a last resort, the aces value will be dropped from 11 to one in order to prevent the AI or the player from busting. So here comes the player's choice. In this case, if the player wants to hit, they will hit the space bar. Um, these two other conditions here are just to prevent button spamming and to disable the player from playing anything else after someone has won. 
So here the player draws a card, and then the AI will also determine if it wants to draw a card. And then all winning and losing conditions are evaluated. If the player decides to stay or pass, the player will not draw a card, but the AI will still decide if it wants to draw a card. And then all winning and losing conditions are tested. So here is the function responsible for displaying and updating text on the GUI. The text properties are defined here. And this function, draw text, will be called every loop. And this will also be responsible for displaying who wins and who loses. After the winner is decided, the player can no longer hit or pass. So if the player wants to continue, they would have to restart the game. And you can do so by pressing the escape key. This will reinitialize everything and wipe all pre-existing game data. And so just to demonstrate this code, this is how the GUI looks. All instructions are given here. And to start, we can just start by hitting spacebar. So the player has hit, and it looks like the player now has the value of 5 in their hand. It looks like it also decided to hit. So five is pretty low. I can hit again, so I can hit the space bar. Now I have a value of 15. The AI has also decided to hit. In this case, I'm feeling a little risky, so I'm going to go ahead and take another hit. And it looks like the player has busted and the AI has won. Right? The value of the hand is 25 for the player, and the player has busted. So that is the game of Blackjack. If I want to play again, I can hit the escape key to wipe everything and start anew. So I can just start again. Here I'm off to a good start with a value of 10. The AI has also decided to take a card. I will hit again. I have a value of 15. The AI also decided to hit a card. Last round I also had 15 and I busted. So in this round I'm just going to pass, uh, play it safe. And it looks like the AI has won with a value of 20. One more game, I will hit, AI will also hit. I have a value of seven, I'll hit again. Value 17, pretty high, I'm going to pass. And it looks like AI has won again uh, with a value of 18. So one other feature of this program is that there is a spectator mode. So I can toggle this on and off by pressing tab. But before I do that, let's start it off. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit. I have a value of eight. Now to enable spectator mode, you can just press tab, and I can toggle this whenever I want to. So I can do it right now. When I press tab, the hand of the AI will show along with the value of the of the card, so you don't have to keep counting. And I can just play in this mode. So I have a value of eight. The AI has a value of nine. I will hit. I have a value of eighteen. And the AI has a value of 19. Now, the AI will probably not hit. But if I don't hit, I'm going to lose. So let's say I'm a bit risky and I'm going to hit again. And it looks like I have busted. The AI has won. And of course, you can also uh, untoggle the spectator mode whenever you feel like. And it looks like, finally, the player has won. Just a technical note, um, the AI is not the dealer, just another player. Other than that, that is it for this presentation, and that is the game of Blackjack. Thank you for watching, and the code will be on my uh, GitHub.